Welcome to the Smart Connection. I'm Dahlia Miller and this is Marie Kucharabi here with me today to talk about um, some applications for math. And um, Marie, you've got a PhD in um, physics mm -hmm. and um, decades of, of teaching experience with math and physics at the, at the high school and math, uh, college level. And mm -hmm. I know one of your um, uh, favorite angles to come at is sort of applications for math or how do mm -hmm. we actually use math in the real world. And you've got an interesting topic to share with us today. Yeah, I'd like to uh, apply math to things we take for granted and uh, are always confronted with the question, what, where are we ever going to use this? So I'd like to answer that question when I can. And so the question I'd like to tackle today for your entertainment is, why do trains go clickety-clack? You know, Dahlia, why do trains go clickety-clack? I don't really know yeah. why trains okay. go clickety-clack. It's, it's a difficult topic these days because a lot of students have not ever ridden trains, and a lot of them have not even uh, walked along railroad tracks. But the answer is there's a gap in the rails. And um, the reason for this gap, we'll talk about in a moment, but the noise is made by the rails, the wheels going along and hitting this space. And as the wheel comes down and hits the uh, following rail, it uh, makes a click when it contacts, and leaving the other one uh, causes it to uh, re expand or relax and produces the clack. And so as they go along, they say clickety-clack. So the wheel, there's a space between the rails and the wheels hit it and that's the That's right, click that's right. And the clack. So the next question comes up, why do we have spaces between railroad rails? Do you know, Dahlia? Uh, okay. okay, well the answer is really? because the heat of friction of the wheel, the wheel traveling on the rail and the heat of the day causes the rail to expand. And so that's uh, why we have to leave the spaces there. Now, if I go to the board, I can probably show you this a little bit more carefully. Here's the rail and uh, the next rail and the space between them. And so as the wheel of the train comes along, it comes into this space, the wheel goes forward, and it comes crashing down onto that corner, producing a click. And releasing here, this, this uh, rail kind of relaxes, and so you get a clickety-clack. And then it comes here to the next space, so clickety-clack, clickety-clack, clickety-clack. So the next question is, why is that space there? And the answer is that uh, during the course of the day, the temperature causes, the increase in temperature of the day causes the rail to um, lengthen, because most metals expand when they're heated. So it lengthens, and this space allows uh, some space for it to expand into. Now, um, if you walk along railroad tracks, you see that it's not very big. So the question is, is this really something to worry about? I mean, how much does it expand? Well, the answer is, if you consult some reference materials, that the coefficient of expansion is about 0.02%. Now, if we tra translate that, that means that if you have a mile of track, 5,280 feet, then um, in the course of the day, it'll expand maybe a foot. So how long a mile is, a mile of track expands perhaps that amount in a day. Um, so if I were to draw that here, then something like that. It goes to 5,280 feet. Now at 281 feet. Question is, is that important? Because we know how long a mile is, and if the track only gets longer by a foot, that doesn't seem like very much. But what it means is that the track then, in the morning when it's cool, would be 5,280 feet, and then let's say at noontime, when it's been heated up, it's now 5,280 feet. So if we were to lay a stretch of track like that and anchor it here with spikes, then it must go up into the air, like this. Now you said at first it's 5,280 feet, but when it expands it's... So this would be 5,281 5, feet. 81 feet, okay. So the question is now, is this really important? It doesn't seem like it, 0.02%. How high does it actually go in the center, which would be the highest part? So let's have a look at this. Um, Here's our 5,280 feet, and then we heated it so it went to 5,281 feet. 
I don't usually like to work in uh, the imperial system, but here the numbers are a little bit convenient. All right, so how high does it go here? Dahlia, what do you think? Now, when you asked me before, I guess the uh, inch or two, it's not very much. Okay, one or two inches. That's my guess. Now, we can make an estimate of that if we do the following. Let's uh, say that this is approximately a right angle triangle. It won't be. This is going to be an arc. But if you think about it, how long it is and how big it is, that's going to be pretty close. We're going to have a right angle triangle, and this length of it will be 2,640 feet. And this will be 2,000, half of 5,281, 2,640.5 feet. And so now if we use Pythagoras, 2,640 squared plus h squared is 2,640.5 squared. So h squared is 2,640.5 squared minus 2,640 squared. And here you get a chance to use something that you learned a few years ago. This is like a squared minus b squared. Something squared minus something squared, so difference of squares. It's equal to a plus b times a minus b. So we can do a little bit of simplification here without getting a calculator involved. This is 5,280.5, 2,640.5 plus 2,640 times 2,640.5 minus 2,640, which is 0.5. And so this turns out to be 2640.25. That's what h squared is. And now if you reach for your calculator and take the square root of that, you find that h turns out to be about 55 feet. 55 feet. So the center of the track, if it extended, got increased its length by one foot, would go 55 feet up into the air. <laughs> That's why we have to leave spaces between the tracks. And so that's why trains go clickety-clack. <laughs> that's significant, so a train up in the air. So um, that's why there's the space between... Yeah, so um, that when the else. temperature um, of the day, for example in California where they're not getting into high-speed rail, mm. last thing you want is to have your trail, your rail buckle right. like that. So you have to have spaces that allow it to expand. So this, this is important for old style trains, but also new high speed trains, any kind of train. Almost all uh, normal types of metals expand when they're heated. Right. So if you're going to be laying tracks through the center valley of California where the temperature rises quite significantly, mm -hmm. you have to take into account that. So this is important to the passengers on the train, to the, uh, <laughs> to the uh, people who make the metal, the people who... Um, the ties, I mean the rails, the, the people who make the, the tracks. Um, when they're being laid, they have to have a space between them. They have to know that stuff. And, and the math, so the math you used here, you used some geometry, some Pythagorean theorem, mm -hmm. some factoring. Yeah, most engineers when they're working on certain projects and just doing the rough calculations will use approximations like that, that the arc is approximately a right angle triangle, right. and they get an idea of how big it's going to be. Right, right. So Very 555 good. feet isn't going to be the exact value, right. but that's a pretty good estimate of what's going to happen. And more than my answer to guess. Well, <laughs> <Start. laughs> it's, I guess you'd say it's counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks very much, Marie. I really appreciate your time and um, uh, look forward to hopefully having some more conversations with you about okay, math and applications. My pleasure. Okay.